What's going on guys? JS Cards here coming at you with a Yu-Gi-Oh! deck profile and today we are going to go over my budget Charmer deck. So it's been Charmer week on the channel. We started off by opening up the structure deck and then I uploaded some EDO Pro gameplay footage so you could see how the deck kind of operated and now we're doing the physical deck profile. I've always liked the artwork and the design of Charmers and it was really cool to see that they got new support and a whole structure deck based on them. Now there are more competitive and better structure decks that you could buy three of and upgrade and you'd have a really powerful deck. Charmers is still fun though, it's a great budget option and if you're a returning player or getting back into the game you might actually like this deck. Most of these cards you can get in the structure deck. I did add a few more though, but they are all pretty affordable. And of course the entire extra deck you'll have to pick up separately, but there's nothing too crazy in here that'll break the bank. This is a good starting deck, I think, and then you can upgrade it with better hand traps and things like that over time. So without any further ado, let's just jump into the deck profile. Okay, so for the familiar possessed cards, I played two copies of Area. She's the water type. Two copies of Ausa, the earth type. One Hita and one Win. I play two copies of the water and earth types because I play their Awakening of the Possessed cards. Those are really nice. We'll get to those in a second, but I think those are the better ones. So I do like having all four different types though in case you want to go into their extra deck monsters. Then three copies of Fairy Tale Luna. This card's great because it can search out one of your familiar possessed or even another Luna and it has that bounce effect. Three copies of Gigabyte along with three copies of Nefarious Archfiend. Both Gigabyte and Nefarious Archfiend can be special summoned if you control a spellcaster monster, and it's just a great way to then go into a Link 2 or a Rank 4 Exceed monster. After that, I play two copies of the Awakening Possessed. Um, it's the Water type. I don't know how to say the name. And same with the Earth type. Both of these are good. 2,000 bodies. Uh, the water one lets you randomly discard a card from your opponent's hand, and then the earth one lets you bring back a level 4 monster from your graveyard. For the last monster is the one hand trap in the deck, three copies of Effect Veiler. This is the spot where you can easily upgrade the deck, even Ash Blossoms or Ghost Ogres or DD Crows. They don't have to be anything super expensive, but you know, you could also throw in Nibiru and um, Imperms as well, but for right now, Effect Failure comes in the Structure deck, so I thought it'd be great just to include it straight into this build, but feel free to adjust the Hand Trap lineup more or less to whatever your local play groups are or whatever decks you play against the most. All right, moving on to the spells, I play three copies of Spirit Charmers. First of all, I love the artwork of this card. It just looks fantastic. It's really good too because you can discard a card and then you can add a familiar possessed monster or any of the spells or traps from your deck to your hand and then you can take another one and you can set it onto the field. So this is just great to either get out a monster or get one of your trap cards out or even one of the spells and kind of go from there. I do play two copies of the field spell along with the one secret village. Honestly, <laughs> secret village is one of the MVP cards of the deck. This has stopped a lot of annoying spells while I was testing this deck out. Uh, a mystic mind player couldn't really do anything. Uh, just, you know, and there's so many powerful spells that are out right now. So if you can just protect your charmers with your uh, secret village, you're gonna be in a good spot. However, with Grand Spiritual Art Ichirin, I'm not sure if I said that name right, it is good though because you do have that mandatory negate effect, which definitely comes in handy. So I like this ratio, and then of course we have the one terraforming to search them out. For the other one of's, I have one called by the grave because hand traps can hurt this deck and if we can stop one at least, that'll help us a little bit. One monster reborn, 
And then the only kind of proxy I have one coming in the mail, um, I have the one Harpy's Feather Duster because ba uh, back row does hurt this deck. I have a gold copy coming in the mail, but for right now I just have a Korean version that I got in a random opening. I think the video is somewhere on the channel, but that's what we have for the spells. So for trap cards, I play three copies of Possessed Partnerships. This card is good, however, I saw it a lot when I didn't really need it or could even use it. So I am considering cutting it down to two, but for right now, I am playing the three copies. This card lets you special summon one of your familiar possessed monsters from your graveyard in either face-up attack position or face-down defense position. If you control monsters with two or more different attributes, you can also destroy one card on the field. After that, I play two copies of Unpossessed. I love this card. So your Charmer monsters cannot be destroyed by battle. If a familiar possessed monster you control attacks, it gains 800 attack during the damage step. And if a monster you control is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can special summon out one of your familiar possessed monsters from your deck. For the last card of the main deck, I play triple copies of Solemn Strike. Um, just a really great classic trap card. Now in the structure deck, Solemn Warning is included and it is at three. I kind of forget that that card's at three, which is crazy, and that's still a really good trap card too. So if you don't have strikes, you could easily play three copies of Solemn Warning. I think strike is just a little bit better though, and it is also available as a common. I think it's like a dollar fifty or maybe two dollars each, or it's in the Machina structure deck if you've already bought one or two of those. So that's it for the main deck. It's 40 cards. Let's move on to the extra deck. All right, so for the extra deck, of course we have the four Charmer Link Monsters. One of each is good, they are good. Some of these even see competitive play outside of the Charmer deck, like Hita, for example. So I thought I'd just showcase those. We'll just set them there for now. Then I play the one Miss Starboy, just because you do have quite a few water ones. I like being able to boost them up as well. Most of the time I am trying to get out area, and then the Gigabyte, and then from there get out your um, Familiar Possessed Water Monster. And just being able to boost them up since they are kind of weaker monsters can come in handy. Then one Nightmare Cerberus and Nightmare Phoenix. I play one Link 3 in the deck, and that's Ningirsu. This is a good out to Dragoon. And for our boss Link monsters, I play the one Borolode Dragon and Unchained Abomination. Borolode is probably the one I go into the most, although both are really powerful. Sometimes your opponent really has no answer to Borolode Dragon. I do play a handful of Exceed monsters too. I know some builds are like almost all Link monsters, but just because you play so many level fours and there's a lot of special summoning going on. I think it's definitely worth playing like as many good rank 4 exceeds as possible. That's why I play the one Tornado Dragon along with Abyss Dweller. I also play Performage Trapeze Magician which is also good because it's a spellcaster, but the real MVPs of this entire deck would be the one Utopia and Utopia the Lightning. Honestly, I won the majority of my games by just sitting on Utopia the Lightning not having your opponent be able to activate effects, and if you have Secret Village out, they can't play any spell cards, so you're sitting in a really good spot if you have a spellcaster out along with like your Utopia or if you can get your Borolode out. Also, it's great because Utopia the Lightning was just reprinted in the new Maximum Gold set, and it's not that expensive. Lastly, for the tokens, just kind of random, we have the three tokens. It's random per structure deck along with the playmat. These are the three I got and they're actually numbered one, two, three. So that's kind of cool. So there you guys have it. That is my Charmer deck for December 2020. It's a really fun, easy control deck. So it's great for beginning players or people that are returning to the game or if somebody just is looking for a fun casual deck. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below and thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it make sure you hit that like button and subscribe for more. That really helps me out. We are just a few subscribers away from 1,000 which is insane to me and once we reach 1,000 I'll be giving away a Jinzo deck and a Machina deck. Stay tuned for more Yu-Gi-Oh! news, deck profiles, and opening videos, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out, and have a good one.